Chopin's Prelude Number no. 15 in D flat major, nicknamed the Raindrop Prelude. It was written in 1838, which is a few years, a couple of decades into the Romantic period. It's important to be familiar with the main features of music composed during the Romantic period before we get too far. Uh, these features include an emphasis on expressing a wider range of feelings and emotions in music. Melody lines become longer and far more developed than in the classical period. There's more freedom for the composer to extend and, and, and make more complicated structure and form in their music. A wider range of chords is used, not just the chords of 1, 4, 5, 2, 6, which Mozart might have used most of the time. Harmony became more chromatic, using notes outside of the key signature to portray stronger emotions. Uh, dynamic contrasts generally got much wider in the Romantic period, sometimes from PPP, or piano pianissimo, as quiet as possible, to forte fortissimo, as loud as possible, represented by FFF. There was an increased level of technical demand in Romantic period music, and the rise of the virtuosic performer. And this was linked, of course, with development of instruments uh, to a, a higher technological level. For example, the piano gaining an iron frame and sustain pedals, developing the tone of the piano, making it warmer and, uh, and making it more resonant. The romantic idea of the struggle of the individual led to the rise of the heroic soloist as a virtuosic performer. 19th century composers such as Chopin, Brahms and Liszt all enjoyed writing music for themselves to perform. The trend also developed to write for well-known virtuo virtuoso performers of the day. As we've already mentioned, in the 19th century, the 1800s, several developments were made to the piano, uh, which gave composers greater opportunity to express romantic ideas in their music. This was achieved through the following developments. The instrument was reshaped and enlarged to give a greater sound. The number of notes increased in both the high pitch and the low pitch, the treble and the bass areas to seven octaves, giving a much greater pitch range for expression. Felt replaced leather on the hammers, producing a more rounded and a fuller tone. Strings became longer, stronger and under increased tensions than previously. The body of the frame was con uh, constructed now of metal as opposed to wood to cope with these increased string tensions. And of course the sustain pedal, the right pedal, and the soft pedal, sometimes known as the una corda pedal, were developed. The sustain pedal is a pedal that when pressed sustains all the strings on the piano by removing the felt dampers from the strings and allowing them to freely ring out. Chopin's piano style. Chopin's piano music is a perfect example of the romantic ideal for expressing poetic feelings and emotions through sound. He was a fitting example of the romantic artist. He was lonely and withdrawn, a talented but tragic figure dying as he did uh, at a relatively young age of 39. He was the founder of the school of cantabile playing. Cantabile is the Italian word meaning in a singing style, emphasis on sustained and held on melodic lines. Chopin's legacy is found in the development of playing techniques to support this all-important melody line, including typical features such as uh, graceful ornamentation, spread out arpeggios in the melody, simple broken chord accompaniments underneath the melody with subtle sustain pedal, discrete use of tempo rubato, that pushing and pulling of the tempo in the music. Passages of rapid articulation and virtuosic display. Greater requirements to control dynamics and volume in the music. Going back to tempo rubato for a second, it literally means robbed time. This is a technique where the player can pull back or speed up the tempo for expressive purposes. This set work, commonly known as the Raindrop, belongs to a body of works by Chopin called the Preludes. Preludes were a published book of 
what's known as piano miniatures from the Romantic period. At the time of their publication, the works were criticised for a lack of recognisable structure and for their short duration. The shortest prelude's only 13 bars long, and the longest runs to only 90. The Raindrop Prelude is one of the longest at 89 bars, uh, and we can see a clearly worked out ternary structure, ABA, in this work. Chopin composed a set of 24 preludes. We would expect a prelude to be followed by something else. However, the 24 Chopin pieces are all stand-alone preludes, each in a different major and minor key. Each prelude is meant to depict a specific idea or emotion. Although all the preludes and nocturnes and etudes, miniature pieces that Chopin created, um, all had different romantic titles, it was actually not the composer himself that gave these titles. It was more like his publisher or editor. The Raindrop Prelude was written during Chopin's period of recuperation at a deserted monastery in Mallorca. The piece was written during a storm, so legend tells us, and the title relates to the dripping of raindrops from the roof of the monastery. In the piece, these raindrops are represented by a continuously repeating A-flat in section A, which is the dominant note of the home key D-flat major. Therefore, we can call these dominant pedals. In the B section, we modulate to C sharp minor, C sharp being the N harmonic equivalent to D flat. So we can call it the N harmonic minor key. And in the middle section, we have constantly repeating G sharps, again, a dominant pedal. Back to the structure of the prelude. It's important to note that the even though this is a clear ternary form the um, ternary form doesn't really fall into three balanced sections the B section is much much longer uh, than the A section and the A repeat after the B is much much shorter than the original A section it becomes interrupted by a short coda of eight bars at the end of the piece The mood of the central C-sharp minor section is dark and stormy, with the melody in the left hand, in the bass of the piano. It has a thick, chordal-like texture. But the piece is remembered and it acquires its nickname of the raindrop from the beautiful melody of section A. Key playing techniques employed in this piece include cantabile legato playing, that means smoothly and in a singing style, careful expressive use of the sustain pedal, and use of tempo rubato, which we've already talked about. Section A, bars 1 to 27. The music is marked sostenuto, which means sustained, and the whole of the A section is marked piano, soft. The right hand has the melody, in regular four-bar phrases. 
and the simple left hand quaver accompaniment incorporates the repeated raindrop dominant pedal. The music is homophonic, or you could say melody dominated homophony, throughout the whole section. Sustained pedal markings are given to help ensure that the smooth singing style of the melodic line comes through. Other features of the A section is that the main tune is characterised by the falling motif F to D flat to A flat, like falling raindrops again. This outlines the tonic chord of D flat at the very beginning of the melody. The phrase, the first phrase ends at bar four with a perfect cadence to confirm the fact we are in D flat major. The melody contains occasional ornaments such as a crushed note, an akiakatura, difficult to say, uh, which means to play a note as quickly as possible before the main note. There are also turns in the melody, another type of ornament. In bar eight, there is a septuplet at the end of the bar, seven semiquavers squeezed into the space of where you normally just find four. It's also worth noting that in the middle of the A section, there is another four bar phrase where through the use of a couple of accidentals, a C flat for example, the mood of this and the tonality of this section changes into a minor key itself. So the main A section has almost a ternary form of its own, a ternary form within a ternary form. Bar 27, the A flat changes character, becomes the enharmonic G sharp at the end of the A section. This G sharp, as already mentioned, is the dominant note of C sharp minor. So the music of the B section starts in C sharp minor, the enharmonic tonic minor to D flat major. Section B is a lengthy and dramatic central section, lasting for over half the total length of the piece. For the most part, the melodic interest is now in the left hand, with the relentless G-sharp pedal note in the right hand. In section A, these pedal notes were light notes, symbolic of gently falling raindrops, but here in the middle section, the mood of the storm gives the repeated notes a more insistent quality, like a bell tolling. The prominence in the musical texture of these repeated notes is achieved through placing the notes in octaves in the right hand, at the top of the musical texture, so we can now call them inverted pedals. The musical texture is homophonic throughout, but with a much fuller sound with chords in the left hand and at times in the right hand as well. The range of notes is increased with the use of octaves in both hand parts. Although the B section starts very quietly, marked sotto voce, which means in an undertone or whisper, the music builds to fortissimo and a bright sounding E major chord at bar 40. So the range of dynamics is much wider here in the B section from piano to fortissimo, soft to very loud.
following this lengthy B section. At bar 76, the A section is reprised. A short restatement of the opening section of the piece. In the reprise of the A section, we find performance directions such as smortzando, which means dying away. The music comes to an unexpected halt, where suddenly the raindrop, the pedal note disappears. The highest note in the piece, incidentally, is the start of the coda, that high B-flat, unaccompanied, monophonic in the right hand uh, during that two-bar break where the rain seems to, seems to have ceased momentarily. The piece ends marked pianissimo, very softly, with a perfect cadence in the final two bars. A ritenuto is also featured at the end where the music slows down to a stop.